found the music, Lomo. You really made a name for yourself in radio. You know, here on Kempire Radio, we love we love to welcome anyone that's doing doing big things in radio as well. How did how did you get involved in radio? Um, I used to watch a lot of Martin Martin Lawrence, mm. and so one of my friends, she had became the uh, the program director of she was the program director, a station program director of a station. So one day they let me fill in for. Mm. Was it Andrew Martinez or Funk Master Flex? Whatever show it was, I did, they was like, yo, you're a natural. You should all do radio. And I was like, I mean, I was just clowning and joking. They was like, no, we know radio. You would sound good. So when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I, had to, I was like, let me take this time off. Because I had an album to put out. But I didn't want to, you know, when you're pregnant with your first child, you don't want to just be, you don't want to be doing too much. Mm-hmm. So... I did my radio show in Baltimore. I wound up having the number one show. Wow. And then after that, I got mad offers to do radio. But I couldn't do it at the time because then I had to go back on the road. So I took a hiatus. And then I was filling, you know, for I filled in for everybody. Steve Harvey, when he had Steve Harvey and his angels, like I would broadcast from New York. And the show would be like, because they were syndicated then as well. I filled in for Doug Banks. I filled in for Russ Parr. I filled in for Funk Master Flex. Like every show that you could think of. That would possibly be amazing. I've had the chance to, you know, be a part of that. And that's like a blessing because I didn't go to broadcasting school. Like, everything I do, I just, what's a, I'm a person that can, I don't sell wolf tickets. Whatever I say I could do, I'm going to do it. I'm a deliverer. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm a person that, when I put my heart to it, oh, it's going to get done. Mm. And then we're going to come in with real writing. So then, but, um, I did the show in D.C., they the station was really struggling. Like, they were at, like, number, I don't even know, like, number 11 or maybe even lower. And then, normally, you know, top five in the United States. Mm-hmm. By the time my one-year contract was up, my show was the number two show. The only person beating me on air was Ryan Seacrest. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he has a $55 million contract. Yeah. So, go figure. <laughs> how, so, how, you know, how has your, your life as a singer helped you as a radio personality? I, I realized that with radio, with it even being rated by a different system, which is called PPM, those are like meters before it was by diary, people just love you to be real. Mm. Um, I never tried to hide anything. I, the guy who was a pro, um, yeah, the program director that hired, actually hired me, he was just like, you know what, Mom? People just really love you. He was like, when you go in it, I mean, we love the fact that you know all the celebrities and stuff like that, but once you make it localized, like, yeah, when a, like a, Big story would break. I'm trying to think what happened. When it was like a couple of things that happened, but the way that I localized it, it made it seem like yo, know, it made people feel that 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 could that they were apart. Not so much like yeah, we going to chill with Diddy this weekend. We making it rain. We flying private jets. Nobody cares about that because half the people that are your listeners ain't got no money. Mm. Be real. Mm. So if I be like, yeah, Diddy that was flying private. <laughs> Shoot, I was on Southwest. What's really good? I ain't mad. I'm trying. You know what I mean? The way you localize, you don't try to make yourself seem broke because you want everybody to aspire to and want to be like you. Mm-hmm. But you let people know, like, shoot, ain't nobody trying to spend eleven thousand dollars a day on no flight. Dude, <laughs> I'm going Southwest play like I'm pregnant, so I can get a front row seat. Hey, <laughs> so like I know that's right, <laughs> even though I could probably be lying. But it's just, <laughs> it's just all the way. It's not what you say or what you do. It's all about how you make people feel. Mm. And for some odd reason, a lot of people say I just make people feel good. I make people not think about their problems because I don't want to think about mine. Mm. Just do not want to think about their problems. Everybody just want to have fun, figure out how they can make their next dollar and how they go take care of their kids. Mm-hmm. And so how, how has being a radio host helped your music? It's helped it a lot because it helped me gauge what the industry is looking for. Um... There's a lot of people on, you know, songs that's on the radio. You're like, Dad, why do I keep on hearing these? I said, people really be calling and requesting them because, you know, that's the way radio's written. It's really written by request, and then there's a lot of things that people do. Like, you never know, a song might blow up out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, man, like, this is really cool. So I gauged what the industry was looking for and based it off that. I was like, okay, so people want to dance. People want to have fun. People want to be in love. People just people just want to party, but people want to hear good singing. Mm-hmm. So... Because it's like a lot of people have to compromise. Either you could sing, but you ain't got no good party songs. Either you could party and you could dance, but you can't sing. So I wanted to make it the best of both worlds mm-hmm. when it came to me with this album. I'm not really that great of a dancer, but my two-step is mean. 
<laughs> you too tough as me. Like I can dance. I cannot memorize a, a routine to save my life. If I had to memorize a dance routine, well, people say I do, because Lorianne and them used to um, choreograph me, but I just be still like, I don't want to be dancing all over the place and be looking dumb and I just be on sale and looking <laughs> crazy and everybody be laughing. I do not want to make a fool of myself. So I was like, I just go ahead and really say and just make it, make everything that I do look at it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that works best for me. Mo, I know you're running around, but Mo, we, uh, you know we cannot have you here on the show and you not sing a little something for us. Oh, okay. What you want me to sing? Oh, oh, damn. You could sing um what do I want you, Put it on me. Love that song. What song? Put it on me. Oh god, let me remember how that go. <laughs> That's the book. Okay. Cuz it's really not a way to sing it. I know. It's the way it feels, so I'll try to I'll try to sing a little bit. Don't <clears throat> you know people clear they thought like that's really going to help them sing that? <laughs> <laughs> Where would I be without you, baby? So if you need me, if you want me to put it on you, because I love you, and don't you forget it. Whenever you need me, if you want me to put it on you, come on, ooh, 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 ooh. darling, where would I be, 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 where would I be without my baby? <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's all I remember. I remember the import, but I forgot how it come in. No, that was great. Lomo, before we let you go, a couple, uh, just a couple more questions. First of all, what is the one question? This is one of my questions I always ask everyone. What is the w- one question that you've never been asked but you wish people would ask? Hello? Yeah. Can I say it again? Sure. What is the one question you have never been asked and you wish people would ask? Um, hmm. Let me see. What's the one question I've ever... Hmm. Why did I... No, because people, people just ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> um. What? Uh, here's one question. Uh, if uh, why did I never get a lip reduction? <laughs> oh damn! I can't. I can't think. Of, I really can't think. There's nothing. I don't think I've ever been. People ask me anything, and I, the shade is is that I answer it. But um, I can't think of anything. Um, people have never asked me why haven't I been one of them girls that. Yeah, went natural. Child, I ain't shaving my hair off and be looking like a big old head monster. No way, it won't catch catch me slipping. I just got a 22 inch wig put in my head. Yes, and I'm gonna fling it this weekend like never before. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, here at Kempire Radio, we, we celebrate up-and-coming talent. We, you know, it's probably one of the number one uh, online radio shows that celebrates up-and-coming talent. What advice would you give um, up-and-coming singers that are trying to break into the business and maintain, a, a, you know, have the same way you've maintained in this business? Just handle your business. Realize that this is business. This is not fun. This is not games. You know, it's... It is fun and games. This is business. And if you, as long as you remember that, you'll never go wrong. Trust me. I learned the hard way thinking, oh, that's my friend. Oh, that's mine. And then they're like, uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah, we can't clear the song. But then just realize that everybody, just because they can't do a song with you or because they label won't play it, don't mean that they don't rock with you. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just like, and just, just be a go-getter. You just can't never stop. I can take hiatuses because I've written songs and stuff like that, and I know when to disappear and come back because I don't want to oversaturate. Even though people say there's no such thing as overkill, yeah, I think there is. Like, there's some people, and then you don't ever want people to miss you, and then when you come back, they be like, why didn't you keep your ass where it was at? Oh, damn. <laughs> I don't trust me. People are just, with all this, um... You know, social media stuff, people will let you have it. I'll be reading some stuff, and I'll be giant over what I see. And half the stuff I can't retweet, and my PR family be like, make sure. I mean, no, well, it's okay if you be messy, but just keep it clean. You don't ever want to look like, I'm like, I don't care. I don't, but then I was like, yeah, you're right. I can't do that. Just trust me. I'll be wanting to go all the way in, but I just take that for behind the scenes for me and my people. Because I don't want anybody to ever think that I'm spiteful of hate, because there's not a bone of hate in my body. I just like to have fun, and I just like to tell it like it is. So if somebody looks, sounds, or even if I look or sound a mess, I would want somebody to tell me. See, that's the problem. I heard um, Charlemagne um, telling uh, Little Mama that, and I don't think he was trying to go off, but he's just very, 
you know, up front, I know who he came up in under, you know, when he was in radio. Mm-hmm. Not be like snappy and get people to listen. Nobody means any harm. I'm like, you ain't paying my bills. So I don't think he meant to make little mama cry or make her feel so like what he told her. He said, I'm going to tell you straight up, like, there's a lot of people that be in people's corner that lie to them because they think if they lie to them, that'll help them keep their job. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nah, tell me the truth. If I look crazy, well, you know what I'm saying, don't say it hating when I know I... When I know I'm jamming, but if I look and sound crazy, tell me. Because there be some people like, oh, you kill. And I'll be like, I don't think I sounded that good on that. But if you say so, but then there's sometimes I'm my worst critic where I think that everything has to sound perfect. They're like, nah, the way that song no, you just like, you just took me in. I'm just like, oh, man, that's what's up. So, you know, you take the bitter with the sweet. Mm-hmm. And Lil Mo, before you go, we have to get a radio drop for you. Any unique way that you want to do it. Okay. Just, just entire radio. Yeah, just don't mention Karma Chameleons because that's not copyrighted it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. Hey, what's up, world? It's your girl, Little Mo, aka the Godmother, aka the Superwoman, aka the Milk, aka at the Little Mo Show. Facebook.com slash Little Mo Show. Everything is the Little Mo Show, and I'm chilling on the Kim Pyro Radio Show. Why, as always, because that's my baby. And I declare this day that you continue to listen. Why, if not, I hope your ears fall off in the toilet and you flush it down. Never mind, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Kim Pyro Radio, that's how we do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Mo, you are awesome. I hope you will come back when the single is out, the album is out. You got to keep yeah. us posted. I will. I definitely will. And we wish you so much more success. Thank you so much for blessing the show. You're welcome, babe. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye.